The total stain area and each stain tool are found in the stain flaw category. These tools will scan the inspection region in segments and detect differences in intensity values that exceed a set level. They are generally used for applications that are looking for defects on a surface like dirt or other contaminants where the surface color should normally be consistent. They can also be used for presence absence type applications as well. The only difference between the two tools is that the each stain tool will give a count of the detected flaws as well as give a size and position of each one. In the generic function list, this tool is simply known as the stain tool. We will start by adding the total stain area tool. Once the tool is added, the first step will be to register the image if you have not done so already. The registered image is a reference image that is stored with the program settings and can be used to set up the tools. In this example, the image has already been registered and I have another tool for position correction already set up. The next step in the setup will be to set up the inspection region. This is the region of interest on the field of view or image where you want to look for any changes of intensity. In other words, the area on the image that should be consistent in color or brightness. As a default, rectangle is selected, but you can choose from rotated rectangle, circle, oval, ring, arc, or polygon depending on the application. In this example, we're going to be looking for any flaws or changes of intensity in this white heat sink area. So I'll just go ahead and use a rectangle. So just draw the rectangle in the area of interest, as you can see here, and click OK when you're done. As you can see, the tool is already detecting a flaw in the inspection region. This is a hole in the part that we need to ignore. This can be done by using a mask region. Click on the inspection region button to edit the inspection region settings. You can add up to four mask regions to each inspection region as needed. In this example, we're going to choose circle to mask out that hole in the center of the part. So just follow the instructions on how to add each region. In this case, it's just a three-pointed circle, so you can adjust and add. So basically, it'll ignore everything inside this circle indicated in purple and still inspect in the main inspection region, which is indicated here in blue. Click OK when the setting is done. For reference, the stain tool works off the grayscale image. If you have a color camera, the image is automatically converted to grayscale using the average RGB levels of the color image. This can be changed as needed by clicking the Extract Color Settings here, as you can see. Now we can set up the basic detection conditions for the stain tool. First, the Scan Direction setting. That dictates which direction that it will look for changes in intensity or, or changes in brightness. In other words, which direction it will scan and look for flaws. As a default, it will look in both directions. So when it does the scanning process, it scans in both X and Y directions. But you can specify a specific direction. So only in the X if you only, only want to look for changes in the X direction. Or just the Y if you only want to look for changes in the Y direction. For this example, we're going to leave it XY because we want to look for flaws in either direction. The segment size is the size of the individual segments in pixels as to how the tool will scan for flaws. The stain tool will break the main inspection region down into many overlapping segments and it will measure the average intensity in each segment. Then compare them four at a time to obtain a difference in intensity, which is known as the stain level. The size and shift is visually indicated by these two small boxes here in the upper left portion of the screen. It depends on the application, but in general the segment size should be set to about the size of the smallest detectable flaw that you expect. It will help to run the tool on a part with a known flaw to set up the setting. In this example, we're going to set the size to 8, which is an 8 by 8 pixel segment. The overlap is automatically set to about a quarter of the size of the segment. Again, you can see that indicated here in the upper left part of the screen here by these two boxes here. The stain level is the detection threshold as to what determines the stain. As mentioned before, this tool will compare the average intensity in four adjacent segments and calculate the difference. If that intensity difference exceeds the stain level, it is added to the total area, as you can see here. The total area is the measured value that is the number of times that the difference in intensity exceeds the stain level as it's scanned across the entire inspection region. 
Ideally, the measured value should be zero on good parts, but it may vary depending on the target condition. As you can see here on our current image, we are getting a measured value of 183. The area of largest difference is indicated by the green crosshair, as you can see in the screen. You can change between the reference image and the current image at any time to confirm the values. If you notice on our reference image here, we got a value of zero. If I cycle through some parts, you can confirm the various levels on the part condition. To assist with setting up the level, you can switch the display up top here to show the numeric readout. Just click this uh, number button here. Uh, it will show the detected stain level and the total area. The detected stain level is the maximum intensity difference that it found as the tool ran the inspection process here. So you can see on this current image here is a good part. The detected level is 6, which did not exceed the stain level, so there is no detected area. If you run some parts here, you can see on this bad part here, the detected stain level was 124. So the biggest change in contrast it found, or change of intensity, was 124. And again, that's indicated by this green crosshair. So you can run parts as needed to confirm the detected levels. And uh, again, set the level accordingly. As you are setting up and working with the stain tools, you can switch the image display to the contrast view. This is a handy process screen that will indicate areas of intensity change as a color-coded image, similar to like a weather map. Smaller changes are, of contrast are indicated in blue, then progresses to green, yellow, and ultimately red if the change is large enough. So if I trigger on a part with some flaws, you can see here, I got, it starts off at blue, kind of turns green, and again, ultimately, if there's a high enough change, it will change to red. Uh, if there is no flaws, you can see that the contrast image is black, indicating that there is no stains detected. The view can also be displayed while in run mode to confirm if the tool is working properly. The final step in the setup is to set up your judgment conditions. This is the upper and lower limit that will make the tool pass and fail. The measured value here is the number of detected segments that where the change of intensity exceeded the stain level. It will probably help to run some parts through as you set this. So as you can see in this example, the good parts have no detected flaws, while the bad parts have more than zero. So we'll simply set an upper limit of zero for this example. So if any detected, if there's any detected area at all on the part, the image will fail. Set these upper and lower limits according to the application. When all the tool settings are complete, click OK and the tool is ready to run. While the tool is running, you can easily confirm the detected stain level, which again is the maximum change of a contrast level, and the total area. And you can also freely choose or select between filtered image and that contrast view as the tool is running to make sure it is detecting the flaws properly. The only difference between the total stain area and the each stain tool is that the each stain tool will group the detected flaws together and perform some further analysis. It will still measure the detected stain level and the total area, but it will additionally give you a count of the grouping. So it will group the detected flaws together and give you a count, as you can see here. It will also put a crosshair on each one of the individual detected flaws. It will give you the stain area, or the size of each one of these detected flaws, and also the position, as you can see here. The setup is exactly the same, it just has some additional settings for the grouping function. One of them is the detection count. This is basically the number, the maximum number of stain groups that it will detect. So just set that number accordingly. The fill hole setting will fill in the shape if or the detected flaw if it's a donut shaped flaw. So when you're detecting these flaws, if it has a basically a hole in the center. When it analyzes the size of that target, it will basically fill it in and the size will be reported back as if it was filled in. The active border setting can be used to ignore flaws that touch the inspection region or basically fall inside and outside the inspection region. Uh, in certain conditions, it's not available. In this example, since we are using a mask region, it is not available, so it's grayed out. But if we didn't have a mask region, we can use that setting to ignore flaws that touch the frame. 
the lower stain setting here in detection conditions can be used to filter out unwanted groups that are too small for the detection. In other words, if you had some noise, uh, some small groups that are being detected and you want to ignore them, you can raise the stain level up to ignore them. So for example, if I raise this level up to about 50 or 51 here, you can see it's now ignoring this smaller detected grouping here. So basically any grouping that's smaller than this size will be ignored. When using this grouping function with each stain, in addition to the lower stain setting, you also have some other filtering conditions that you can use. So if you click on the double arrow here under detection conditions, it will take you to these uh, more advanced settings here. As you can see here, you can filter off unwanted groupings deep based off their roundness, which is how similar they are to a circle, their major axis, so how big the major axis is, the major to minor axis, and also the equivalent oval major axis and aspect ratio. You can also set the detection order here, so in other words, how the groups are numbered. As a default, they're numbered in size order, with the biggest one being first. The judge label, as a default, is set for zero, which is the first object in the list, but you can also change that as needed, which changes the detected or judged label. When setting the judgment conditions when using the each stain tool, it's based mainly off the groupings, as you can see here. So you can set an upper or lower limit on the number of groups, which we have done here. We've set an upper limit of zero. So if there's any detected groupings, the tool will fail. Um, you can also set a tolerance on the stain area of the judged label. Again, that's the one indicated with the green cross here. As you can see, the measured value is 62. So you can set an upper or lower limit on that. If you click this double arrow on the judgment condition, you could also set a limit on the total area. Again, the number of segments that pass the stain level, as we set before. Um, you can also set a tolerance on the center of gravity of the position of the detected grouping. So again, this is the judge label, the one in green, so I could set an upper or lower tolerance on the position. Other than that, that's it. The tool's okay and ready to run, and you can run the tool. One more note when using the stain tools. If you're using a ring or arc type inspection region, you have a few additional options when it comes to scan direction. Uh, as you can see here, we're at the default XY right now. So if I show you the contrast image, we're, we're detecting changes in contrast, of course, all the way around the circle as it is looking for any change in contrast in the X or Y direction. But if we want to avoid that when using this type of inspection here, we can change this to circumference as far as the scan direction. So it will scan around the circle instead of up down. So if I trigger through some of these parts, you will see it will only look for changes in this circular direction. As you can see here, and as you can see here. You can also change it to radius, which will scan only in a radial manner, kind of like spokes on a wheel. In summary, the stain tool is a perfect choice if you have applications where you're looking for any kind of defects, contaminations, etc. on a surface that normally should be very consistent.